Hi guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. Okay, this was a video I really wasn't planning on making, but then as I had some time, I was surfing YouTube and I actually saw very few videos on this topic. So what we're going to talk about today is the market for vintage arcade video games and pinball machines, okay? I'm gonna try to do both of these topics in one video because there are differences that you guys have to understand. Now before we go any further, for the record, I do not think any of my viewers, anybody who reads my articles for Antiques and Auction News, anybody who comes to me for advice on collecting, speculating, and investing in the greater antiques and collectibles market should be putting any money in vintage arcade machines at present time. And that goes even for pinball, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, okay? You have to understand the, the market for these items is extremely limited, okay? When you sell, especially vintage arcade machines, we'll talk about pinball in a minute, okay? So I'm going to push the pinball realm over there, and I'm going to slowly focus on vintage arcade stand-up machines, okay? From the coveted era of the late 1970s to the early 1990s, okay? If you buy one of those machines, the market for resale is extremely limited, and chances are you're going to pay a premium for the item to get it. You're going to have to maintain it. It's going to suck electricity if you use it or keep it plugged in. Believe me, these are not low energy devices. I've owned several. And number three, a lot of people who you think are going to be, how do I want to say this, impressed by an acquisition of having like a vintage Donkey Kong or Miss Pac-Man machine in your house, that nostalgia is going to wear off, okay? And even as you, the enthusiast who purchased that game, I assure you, that nostalgia is going to wear thin. Okay, guys? This is something that I think modern era gaming got right. Okay? If you can play Miss Pac-Man on a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One or one of the Namco Museum compilation discs or games that are out there, by all means, play it that way. There is absolutely no reason to spend $1,100 or $1,300 for a near-mint, fully restored Miss Pac-Man game machine. Okay? There is none. You guys can fool yourselves all you want thinking it's an investment. It is the worst investment you can make. Vintage arcade machines, on average, have been trending downward or at least at the same level for the last couple of years. There are some exceptions, okay? I've said this before. I would love to own an original Japanese Splatterhouse machine, okay? Splatterhouse is probably my favorite Namco game. I love the TurboGrafx-16 version, okay? If I would ever find a vintage Japanese near-mint Splatterhouse machine, I would probably pony up the money to buy it. They are incredibly hard to find, if not rare, okay? That said... Most people are not buying rare games, okay? They're going after either common as Drek stuff that has a cult following. Your Miss Pac-Mans, Pac-Mans, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Galaxian, Dig Dug. They're going after stuff like that, okay? Or they get a little esoteric and they want to buy a Street Fighter machine, a Virtual Fighter 2 machine, something of that nature, okay? They are horrible investments. They suck a lot of energy, okay? They are not energy efficient. Number two, you have to pay to maintain them. Number three, you have to be very careful to observe the market carefully because when you go to sell the item back, it's not something like a coin or a piece of currency or a graded video game where you can just throw it on eBay or send it to Heritage Auctions and they'll handle it for you. It's something that requires a lot of people to move. It requires a truck and the buyer has to be very passionate about the item. Okay, because if you have to ship it long term, long distances, you are going to pay a shipping and crating fee that is going to be at minimum 300 bucks. It can go all the way up to 500 to a thousand dollars, guys. Okay, do not invest in vintage arcade machines. Okay, especially with the advent, I'm going to say it. You ready? Arcade One Up. Arcade One Up is literally killing the market for vintage arcade machines, okay, of which there's an arcade one-up equivalent. If you don't believe me, look at prices across the board. Mortal Kombat arcade machines are dropping in value because you can go to Walmart, 
play $300 and get an arcade one-up machine that has Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 already built in on the machine, okay? The only difference is it's a three-fourth size replica of the stand-up original. That's it. Most people are buying them, okay? That's why Arcade 1-Up is making a killing right now. Even me, I, when Arcade 1-Up first came out and was announced, I took a neutral stance to their product, okay? I own none of them currently. That said, the Star Wars one and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one that is coming out later this year really looks tempting to me. I will say that. I may actually have to bite the bullet and buy them, okay? At 300 bucks a piece, it's steel, okay? You have to understand that the market has changed. It is fundamentally changed from here on out. You know, you hear the word catalyst on my channel a lot. Those of you that watch my other videos. Arcade One Up was a catalyst that dramatically changed the market for stand-up vintage arcade machines. Okay? Does it matter that people have in their head, well, the vintage arcade machine is, is, is original. It's the authentic game. People are going to want that. No, it's not happening, okay? Like I said, there are some rare games that are trending upwards. I just mentioned one, Splatterhouse, okay? But across the board, most of these items are remaining flat. Some are falling in value, okay? Now, if you are a passionate person, okay, maybe some of you have the means and the time where you want to create like a basement arcade and you want all original arcade machines, I highly strongly caution you to go that route but if that's the route you're going to go, by all means, go for it. But just understand, if you pay a premium for those games, because you probably want to get them from a company or a dealer that has a warranty on them, that way if the machine breaks down, if something happens, you can get it fixed relatively easy. Okay. That said, if you go that route, you have to understand when you go to sell that machine, you're going to get substantially less because the person that's buying it from you is not going to get a warranty. Okay? And even if you offer a warranty, it's not going to mean shit because you're not a dealer. Okay? These are things that you have to take into account. Do not let passion go to the extreme and pull you into something like this market. Okay? This market is not stable or secure. Okay? Now, let's talk pinball machines. Okay? On the other end of the spectrum, and yes, I have owned and own pinball machines. Pinball machines are something of kind of a abnormality in the vintage coin-op market. You see, here's the problem. All you pinball lovers out there, and I'm one of you, okay? If you want to play a vintage pinball game, it's not easy to do on a PlayStation 4, an Xbox One, or any type of uh, video game that was released in the pinball genre, okay? It's something that can't easily be emulated. So, a lot of your classic pinball games okay, are trending for a good penny right now, okay? For instance, I can tell you, I'm on a website here, let me just give you one example, guys, okay, and I'm going to name games that aren't even what I consider classics, Laser Q, okay? Laser Q was released by Williams in 1982, and it had a futuristic pool theme, okay? It's $2,999 on this website with a one-year warranty, okay? That's a good price, don't get me wrong. The problem is, if you pay $3,000 for that item, you have to understand, even if you hold it 5 or 10 years, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to sell it for $3,000, okay? You really have to know what you're doing. That said, let me give you a tip that you're probably not going to hear on any other channel. Pinball machines go up in value a lot faster than vintage arcade machines, okay? Doesn't mean I'm recommending you buy them, okay? You may buy the wrong one. You may buy one that has no market movement whatsoever. But I'm just saying to the people who bought games like Pinbot, Funhouse, Bride of Pinbot, Jackbot, all the classics. Uh, what's the other one I'm trying to think of? Whitewater. Uh, all the classic pinball games from that coveted era. Like I want to say the 80s to 90s. Okay, that seems to be the coveted era. You've done really well if you kept the games in working order and you have a market to sell to, okay? Just understand, and this is what people need to fundamentally understand. If you're going to park large sums of money in items like pinball machines or vintage video games, okay, it really doesn't even matter what the market does, okay? 
The problem you're going to have, if you need to li liquidate that collection or you decide you want to cash out, you're kind of at a whim due to the fact that it takes like three people to move a pinball machine. Plus, you have to get it to an auction house. And I guarantee you, you're not going to like sending a totally working near mint pinball machine out west and paying $500. And then you already spent $3,000 for the machine. And now you only get back $2,000 because that's what the auction ended at. And you convince yourself it's an investment. Okay? Guys, leave vintage arcade machines and pinball machines to the experts. Okay? If you want to buy one pinball machine or two pinball machines because you have the money, okay, and you enjoy pinball, you're an enthusiast, go right ahead. But don't call it an investment unless you really know the market, you know what you're doing, and you have a way to flip the item and liquidate it when the time comes, okay? That's the only way. I see tons of people make stupid mistakes in this market where they could have bought a high-end piece of currency, a coin, and literally all they had to do was send an email to Heritage, negotiate the auction rate, and they would have been fine. Instead, they're sitting on five pinball machines, okay, of which they're trying to liquidate two of them, okay, and they pretty much have to sell it at a loss back to the dealer in which they bought it from, okay? Don't be in that position. If you guys want more commentary on this, Please paste the note, post a note in the comments so I know I can do a follow-up video to this. I'm not going to go in greater detail in this video. This isn't going to be a 20-minute video because I just want you guys to understand the market for these items is very limited, it's very fragmented, and it rewards the people who literally know how to work on these machines, okay? If you're the type of person who really knows like electrical engineering and literally knows how to fix like a pinball machine or a vintage arcade machine and you go out and you look for beat up machines, you repair them and you flip them on the market, you can make a lot of money, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you, you can. Because even if you find a Miss Pac-Man machine for 200 bucks and you put $300 and you know 20 hours into it fixing it, if you flip it for a grand, you're doing great, okay? But the average person cannot do this. Believe me, it is not a business that anyone can learn and get into. Most of the people who are in this market grew up either in some form of the coin-op business, whether their parents or family had an arcade at one point or a pizza shop that had arcade machines in it. Something of that nature is how they got the craft and the skills to do it, okay? It's something that's very complicated. I'm not saying you can't learn it, but the learning curve is steep and the cost to get there is high, okay? So please, before you guys go out and buy these type of items, just don't let passion run amok, okay? Understand the market and know that you may honestly be better off just getting an arcade one-up machine and calling it a day, okay? Thanks, guys, and have a good night.